Hey gang, welcome to the Chrissy, Sam and Brownie podcast. I made a uh, very late run, or did I, for gold in Stump Chrissy against Deb from Bundura today. I'm mean, proud of how I played. Yeah, absolutely Excellent. magnificent. May I feel tidbit, it was all about the war. And Miff from Speaks and Specs. Mate. Yeah. She's great. A national treasure. She really is. Yeah. Lovely person. Absolutely. Uh, as you can probably tell, Uncle Dave O'Neill's here. Oh. Enjoy the podcast. La, la, la. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. The uh, Today's day, today's weather is brought to you by the song, Why Does It Always Rain <laughs> On Me? Is that Coldplay? Travis. 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 Mm. And why is it rain? Why do we say that, uh, Dino? Because we've got a very important morning. We've got a tea time at 10.44 a.m. Gunners, what's going on? Are we playing golf or not? Well, it might be a bit dodgy. 80% chance of showers. Mate. 80%. No, Gunners, I know, oh, I, I know no. percentages, okay? Mate, that's I want bad. to know, in, okay, your, in what your, the... your gut, what do you feel in your gut? Are we teeing off at 10.44, well, rain-free? Looking outside the official weather window, still a bit dark. But you will probably have a few showers. Oh, oh no. Well. Now, Which I'll say to you, it's sprinkling, and I'll say to Dino, it's a downpour. So you might you know, cover all bases. Yes. Can I ask a golf question? Yes. Thank you, Gunners, yeah, by the way, for your expert opinion on the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Is golf like walking? Like, if I'm walking and it's raining, I just put on wet weather gear and I still do it. You've got to hold the club, Swanee. Mm, that's the issue that's you the have. That's the issue. It's slippery. It's a bit slippery. It can actually come out of your hand and hurt someone. Yes. And you can't wear... There's no special gloves for that? John? Uh, there would be, I'm well, sure. Well, yeah, you can wear two gloves, but then the gloves get wet. So mm. I was playing golf with my dad on Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was dry, but the glove came out of his hand several times. Five... <laughs> Followed by an expletive yeah. Latin tirade that would have been heard from two k's away in the clubhouse. I love it so much. Wait, Brian's 64 years old. He's a I'm teacher. Going, I'm going, settle down, Brian. Retired teacher. No <laughs> fury. No fury like a man whose golf game is slipping. Oh, man, it's wild. <laughs> no. He was. No, wild. It's absolutely. Unsafe. And then you hear the whack of the club and the golf bag. Great song. Oh, no. Add that to the karaoke list, John. That song. Add that. I like that. I'm not sure about the uh, moving steel karaoke list. Yeah. What do you reckon? No, do you it won't be a workout song. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Have you checked out whatif.com's top ten winter weekenders yet? How good's a what-if tip? Fraser Coast is in there. Coral Coast, Bruni Island, Orange. Ah, book your winter getaway on the What If app. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Uh, it's Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Nova 100 on Sunday. We all get on an aeroplane to go to the uh, Bogan Central of the world, the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast, it has come a long way. Sorry. It has. It's not as boganic as it used to be because, of course, the Logies are on on Sunday night from about 2 in the afternoon until about 10 in the morning <laughs> the following day. No, no, it's about a four or five hour broadcast. Um, and I'm excited about it because I haven't been to the Logies for years mm. and really... Let's face it, haven't been out of the house yep. for a yeah, few it's, years. It's a big day preparation-wise, though, for you, because I'm tipping you're going to be preparing longer than Sam. Sam reckons his prep starts at about 2.30, 3 o'clock because yeah. he couldn't join me and Dino for golf. Losing. So I'd hate to think what your preparation's like because I'm not sure Sam needs as much hair and makeup as you. Well, that is Dan. very true. The call time is very early, 2 p.m. I think I've got to be at, <laughs> the, at the hotel. <laughs> That's madness. <laughs> it is madness. But, they, you know, it's a huge day for the networks and they've got so many people to organise. So they like you there early, which I understand. And yeah. then they know you're there. Okay. And that's that. And I'm presenting with Carl Stefanovic. Yes. Um, and I'm really excited uh, about that. Have you got the speech yet? The the words? You have yes, to I've got the words and they're on auto cue. So you know I'm going to kill it. Easy. Yes. How many would Carl warm up with? I feel, yeah, Carl would probably five or six beers just so it takes the edge away. Uh, 100%. Bit like, bit like a game of pool, just trying to hit the sweet spot. No, he's going to be up there with Christine. Yeah, I think that's why they've put us two together because they must know that I haven't had a drink in nearly two years <laughs> and he hasn't had a drink in nearly two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a match made in heaven. I just want to take you through um, my prep. You know that I'm not a fancy lady at all. Um, I have not tried on the dress that I'm wearing. That's, hey, we're three <laughs> sleeps out. Listen, I went to pick it up last night from the great Sonia Capalazzo, who I love, and she's so clever and creative. 
But I've only got two fittings in me and I've done them. Yes. And I got there and I just, it was freezing cold. I was absolutely exhausted. It was 6 p.m. at night. I saw the dress and I said to Sonia, what, I mean, what can we do now? I'm flying out in the morning. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'd rather find out at the Logies. That's insane. Oh, really? You're rolling yeah. your dice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I can't because what are we going to do? I said I could put it on now, and if it doesn't work, what are we going to do? There's nothing we can do. you no. got more time to get a backup, you crazy person. No, I can't do it. I'm fine. It'll be fine. But It'll be beautiful. Be, there'll be sort of seam, seamstresses there. Listen, and you make a couple of little cuts here. And that's what I'm That's what I'm. Little guessing. stitches there. That's what I'm guessing. So tune in to the red carpet um, to see uh, the dress. For the first time. I'm going to be wearing it for the first time. You might be letting it all hang out. I might be. I might go for the whole Maria Venuti. (laughs) Uh, You know, giant titties out. Or get Carl to uh, Janet Jackson everything. Oh, my God, yes. Consider it. That's all I'm saying. Damn, I've run out of... a star in your nipples, I've run out of time to get a starry nipple ring. Just just make it there. Get some duct tape. I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. There's all these things that I've forgotten. The most important part... Are you going to get the scotch eggs sort of of halfway out, though? Are you really going to... Is the Gold Coast. Yes. Spogan Territory, sorry. Mm, mm. I feel as if they need to be sort of halfway, ready to jump out of that suit you're wearing. They're actually not. They're, they're, they're tucked away. Oh, they're, they're, what a shame. They're, they're high, and, shame for high and tight, <laughs> as, as they say. Yep. Um, it's going to be the hardest working bra on the night, of <laughs> yeah, course. Yeah. Um, a bit like David King's top button. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What works harder, my bra or David King's top button? <laughs> They're both seeing the same trauma counsellor. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They are exhausted. Easy to be flat when he's this key. Um, <laughs> the most important part of my prep yesterday, to give you a little insight, was the 4 and 20 hot pie I ate in my car yes. at about 2.30pm. Nothing wrong with that. On a cold day. Is there anything greater? Did you squeeze it before you bought it? No, it was the last one there. Okay. So, again, like the dress, it was either going to be good or not, and I was eating it, and it was... It's become a little tradition in this winter for me. Mm. I get this idea, I'm like, oh, God, I need a pie. Yeah. And luckily for me, oh. um, you know, there's a 4 and 20 pie in every servo, oh. and, uh, and I went with that. I did toy with the idea of the man size. Have you seen them? I have. The 4 and 20 man size. Slightly higher, mm. slightly bigger. I don't know if I've seen it. I don't know if I've had one. I've well, seen them I haven't had one haven't either. Had one. I just wanted the standard one, yes, and, that, and that's what I had. Um, I had about eight in the box last night. Mm. Mini ones are. <laughs> I imagine if he ate eight, it'd be some sort of yes, record. Yes. Now I've um I've got my dress. I'm flying out today. Dress. I'm spending a couple of days with the major, who Tickets. also lives on the Gold Coast. Uh, Speech. Yes, all of that is sorted. I've got my shoes. Got my dress. It's Bag. in the car. I'm yeah. carrying it on um, in on hand luggage because I've been told that you know sometimes things get lost and that would be Smart. a disaster. Smart purse, accessories. Thank you so much for yeah. asking. I've got two options here. Yes, I did buy a pink one and then I went cold on no, it. No, yes, doesn't work. I've okay. got two here. Yes, 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 yes and yes. I can't choose. All right, they're aesthetically similar, Jonathan, but it's the only thing that's different, really, to if the eye. They're a the hard shape. clutch, and they've got gold um, hardware, which goes with my earrings. Just knocked That's off important. a couple of crocodiles to get to those. Well, no, I've just knocked their, their from 10 wardrobe. <laughs> okay, all right. John, is John deciding for you right One now? One is, what shape is that? And that's is a, know. That's, a, that's a diamond. No, uh, it's, a, it's, it's got sides. a special name. It's a hexagon. Is hexagon, it a hexagon? like... Yeah, I suppose so. An elongated hexagon, like a mm. stop sign, but stretched. Yeah, elongated, yeah. I like that. It's something different about that. It's Is very this Kath one? and Kim of you, Jonathan. Or, <laughs> or there's just the rectangular one. <laughs> is your dress wild? Oh, my God. I, this is like the hardest. Yeah. This is like that Instagram meme with like a formula around your heads, Jack. Should no, I ask you? I know. I know. I'm going straight I mean, to Jack. I'm going with the bigger one, the rectangle one, because just like Aretha Franklin, you'll be collecting uh, the envelope at the end of your speech. Not a bad, That's not the way a bad the networks point. Networks like to roll, and they'll be giving you big fat envelope for your services. Well, in that case, I should take a glad bag, <laughs> oh! a heavy duty glad bag. What do you think, Hollywood? I think Brownie's right. Having seen your dress, I think the rectangle is a little bit more classic okay. and finishes off. The, the look. Done. There you go, and done. easier for you to hold down the red carpet, Swanee. Thank the other one will get annoying. S- thank you so much. All thank the best. You. All the best. Although the other Thanks. one, you could use that as a weapon because it is pointy at uh, either end. It is. I could just, boom, Costa Georgiatis on the head. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. <laughs>
What about this Aussie legend a few days ago? I love that, Dino. Thanks, John. Great support, man. Thanks, John. <laughs> You could turn it off now, though. Now? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, this, this Aussie legend, Brendan Mills, up at Logan. Millsy! Uh, up at Bogan Town, Swanee. Logan, up in uh, the south of Brisbane. Logan yeah. rhymes with? Bogan. Bogan, uh, a few days ago, uh, Swanee Brendan came home with the family, mm. and uh, he found someone just ransacking the house, and then they ran out and jumped into his car. Terrifying. Terrifying, Swanee. Um, but I'd be like, off you go. Take yeah, it. Yeah. Well, you know what Brendan did, though? Oh, he they, didn't do that, did he? Well, they didn't have the keys. They ran and they panicked. They had no keys. So Brendan had the forklift because he's an auto... He, he works in automation. Or he, he's an auto mechanic. And uh, he decided to uh, put the forks underneath the car and just lift the car up and then call the police. This is, <laughs> this is like some Looney Tunes sort of trap. Inge- yeah. Ingenious. Uh, he had a chat to... Uh, so um, the robbers are in the car. That's right. But he's got the key. The owner's got the key. That's right. And he clicks it locked and then puts it on a forklift, lifts it in puts the air. Puts it on the forklift. Genius. Genius. He what? had a chat to David Koch yesterday. Uh, I just said, look, I have to handle it. The only way I know how to handle it. Um, and, 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 yeah, just um, improvise at the time and... Just had to make, uh, you know, take some calculated risks on the situation mm. and um, think, okay, what's the safest way to, to somewhat uh, resolve the situation? So, yeah, I just, well, I, on, you know, yeah. there's all the forklift sitting there. Well, yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? That's just what you do, Swanee. You, just, so then, you put the forks under and up she goes. And then what happened? Well, then he called the cops. He called the cops and said, hey, I've got a couple of bogans here. It was actually a young lady. Uh, sitting in the uh, car... And uh, she's ransacked the house. She's had a shower. She helped herself to a bit of a feed. Uh, you need to come around here. So then the coppers have uh, showed. The coppers have showed up. They waited at the bottom, and then he put the forks down. He put the car. <laughs> he brought the forks down. Obviously, put the car on the ground, and then the coppers opened the door and made the arrest. That is brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, what about Koshi? Do you reckon Koshi's had any experience doing this sort of thing? Mm. Why does a bloke have a forklift in his yard to start uh, with? <laughs> Look, I, I'm in the automotive trade. Um, right. Right. I, I don't know if you know about lifting heavy things, but um, forklifts <laughs> make light lifting, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for explaining that to Koshi. He's not really, um, you know... Handy at all. At, at all handy. Not very hands-on, mate, eh? Yeah. No. <laughs> Ooh, you like that? A couple Koshy. of clips to Koshy. <laughs> also, Koshy doesn't even know how to say forklift. He calls it a four. Cliff, have a listen. In the second grab? Yeah. yeah. Why does a bloke have a forklift in his yard? A <laughs> forklift? He does too. That's a great pickup, Swanee. Yeah. He, he'd have accountant's hands too, wouldn't he, Koshy? Yes. Like, would have never done a hard day's labour in his life. Never. Wouldn't have even picked a weed. A forklift. A God fork- almighty. Cliff. Koshy, what's wrong with you? Uh, 13 24 10, give us a call. Have you ever made a citizen's arrest, Swanee, or helped yes. a citizen's arrest? Throat a quant. Throat, throat a quant. <laughs> Sorry, Koshy, what? Oh, what? <laughs> Thwarted? Throat a, a quant. That was a very, Jeez. very ambitious sentence at 6.46 in the morning. Have you ever throated a crime? Yeah, have you ever? Uh, thwarted. Had... Thwarted. Swanee, you say it. Have you ever thwarted a crime? Or ever made a citizen's arrest that in 2014? Have you ever had to say... Don't move! Chris, how are you from Ballarat? Have you had to make a citizen's arrest, brother? I have. Uh, yeah, I used to work as a late night manager at Coles, and um, we had a bit of a theft there. And uh, some bloke stole a bottle of whiskey from the liquor land next door and darted out the door. And the girl at the checkout. Oh. Well, his phone oh, cut out. Helen but... kicked in. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, mate, you cut out your phone. Go go back and rewind about 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So some... Nah, mate. The, nah. Land. Nah, Look, the gist of the story is he, he said this to him, Jonathan. Don't move, dirtbag! That's what Drop he's... that bottle of whiskey. Dirtbag. Yes. Is that what you said, Chris? That's what I said. He's stolen the whiskey, he's darted out the door and the adrenaline kicked in, so I've chased him out and I'm saying, mate, just stop it, just bring it back. Let me have it. You can I'll be on your way. And he just ignored me, so I gave him a little hip and shoulder. What? And he and he sort of hit the deck, and I don't know how the whiskey landed, but um, yeah. And then a couple of bystanders helped me restrain him, and um, the police eventually showed up. But prior to that, just before the cops showed up, he managed to turn around and scone me in the lips. So I had a oh, big fat one. Oh, not a big, not a big fat one. 
Is it worth it, brother, all that for just... Uh, that's a great effort, Chris. Hey, well Good done, on yeah. you, brother. Hey, well done. No, well that is done. a great Quick effort. Day, you and, I, him up. and I don't know whether it's my apathy or fear. That, that is a true question. That if I saw somebody stealing something, I would just let them have it. Yeah. Yeah, is that apathy or fear? Oh, no, it's it's apathy because mm. the the management you they're not happy with you going out and putting yourself in danger. Yeah, right. Okay. You've won a pair of bed footwear home boots, cozy, comfy, oh and God. conscious. You'll live in bed footwear's home boots, my man. These Ding. are unbelievable. Kick him in the nuts next time, in the Chris. Nuts, brother, Sam. Sammy from Reservoir. Yes, sir. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good, mate. What what's your story? Yeah, good. We're watching movies one night and. Um, we're sitting inside and I can hear someone walking in the back and a guy sat in the back with his bicycle in the backyard sitting having a smoke. <laughs> I walked outside the backyard talking to him. Hey, mate, how are you? He goes, yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. I go, what's going on? He goes, no, nothing much. I said, beautiful. I said, uh, we've got him on camera as well. So um, I, I said, by the time I wanted to grab him, and he, I had to sit on his chest. Uh, um, what was that? Sit or was there an H? No, no sit. I just no, you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to sit on his chest by the time the police got there. Uh-huh. I love this man. That's and and obviously, Sammy, as you went to take him down, you went with this. Don't move! Don't move! Brave man. That's my favourite thing with people that are breaking the law on your property is a lot of the time they're very casual about it. Yeah. You know, he's just sitting in Sam's backyard with his bike having a ciggy. Yeah. He's not allowed to be there. And then the adrenaline kicked in and Sammy sat on his chest. Yeah. Sat. And took a dump on it. Absolutely. Good on you, Sammy. In many ways. That's wild. Um, You've won a pair of bad footwear home boots as well. Cozy, comfy and conscious. You live in bad footwear's home boots because they're the best. Uh Uh-oh, Uncle Dave's here. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, dark, cold Melbourne. The sun has just come up. It's Dave O'Neill. Oh, yes, and I'm doing a shy Bolton. I'm showing you my donut, you know, before I eat it. (laughs) Look at that. Look at that. Topical stuff. We've got to make this... Great topical stuff. We've got to make this intro fast. uh, Otherwise, we're not going to have time to get to Miff Warhurst. Oh, Miffy! Just around the corner, Dave. Good friend of mine. How are you feeling? We're seeing you twice in uh, in one week. It's great. Get out of the house. Oh, you were magnificent on Wednesday. It's great yeah, to it's see you. See you. Yeah. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Dave O'Neill's here. And just quickly, if you've got a gold card in anything, I want to talk about gold cards. Yeah, yeah. 13, 24, 10. Because I've read this article in the paper about a guy called, um, a cop called uh, Constable Beecroft. And he's highway patrol. And what happened was that uh, his mate, another cop, got injured. And so he sped to help him. He hit 230 k's on the Hume Whoa. and got pulled over by another cop. Now, the cop he was going to help was fine, ended up in hospital. He was uh, just overnight or whatever. Yeah. But he's concerned for his mate. And so he's been taken to court for speeding, but he's got a gold licence, which I've never heard I've of. I've never what? heard of either. Yeah, I, I'd heard that. Brownie's they, they heard of the it. Pursuit. My uncle was, was a copper. I'd heard about these gold licences or special licences yeah, these for the are, police. The speed limits don't apply to them. Yeah. Are they only for cops? Cops. Yeah, but then there's also, you can get a silver licence, mm. and then there's a bronze licence and a white licence, which is what we've got. We've got white licences. But cops can get br- uh, gold, silver, and bronze. So why did they bother taking him to court when they knew yeah, that he know. had a gold yeah. licence? Yeah, I don't know. Well, this is it's like a, a legal argument. Judicial system is broken. Oh, mate, it's broken. <clears throat> we need Darren Hinch back in politics. Can uh, I Can I tell you? <laughs> Can I tell you the greatest, the greatest perk really of this entire job, and you're going to agree with me. Have you got a gold card? I've had it. I've had one. You've had a gold card. I've had one, and it was oh. actually called a titanium card. You know where this is going. Um, oh, oh. It was called a titanium card, but it had the privileges of a gold card, and it was for twelve glorious months. It's expired now, but twelve glorious months. At Char Grill Charlie's. It's amazing. Oh, the chicken shop? Yep. You had a gold card, a titanium yep. card. Oh, oh, oh. It was yep. titanium. It was, it was unbelievable. It was oh, oh. heavy. It was about a 200-gram yeah. card. Mate, you could have oh, killed someone. If, if someone went to rob you, you just could have whacked them in the head with your wallet or your purse. Yeah. You would have killed them. And oh. I can't tell you the delight of ordering two hot chickens cut oh, up no. into... I'm going to go eight today, thank you. 
a family chips. And handing and over the titanium. Yeah. Do the staff know what to do, though? Yes. That, so, oh, yes. Oh, okay, that's so good. Do. Because I did a gig for Well, McDonald's. you don't reckon I was there every second day with yeah. my titanium card. Don't worry. <laughs> they knew what to do. Our photo was on the entry. <laughs> Quite literally, our photos are up there, yeah. I did a gig for McDonald's once. A guy for the Bendigo McDonald's, this guy owned three McDonald's in Bendigo. Oof. What an empire. A and baron. Baron empire, McDonald's. Empire. Mm. And he said, you know, I could possibly organise a gold card for you. <gasps> What? Really? what? I Just said, no, for Bendigo, no. though? No, no, for McDonald's. There's McDonald's gold cards. And I said, mate, to, honestly, I, I like eating McDonald's, but I don't want one because, you know, fast forward six months, I'd be divorced. I'd be in a one-bedroom <laughs> flat in Thomastown. Well, dialysis. Yeah, I'm dialysis. Yeah, I'd be lying in a bed of fries. <laughs> <laughs> the Westpac helicopter would be lynching me, winching me out because it would be so fat. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I didn't even know that they existed at yeah, McDonald's. McDonald's I, gold I was cards. thrilled enough with a sticker that was doing the rounds in the early 2000s where you got a free coffee yeah. oh. at drive through Do you remember if yeah, you yeah. had the sticker up, oh, yeah. you could get a free coffee when they first started McCafe, and that was well, magical. Well, Andy, who works here, was telling me that Lee Simon, the yes. uh, Triple M guy, yeah. had a Blockbuster gold card. Oh. So he would oh, come wow. to the video shop and he could borrow anything. He had still had to return them on time. A blockbuster gold card. Well, why that's did he amazing. have to return them on time? Yeah. He's a gold member. Uh, He's not, not yeah. going to pay any money. That's right. Does that cancel out the uh, the overdue fees? You'd hope so. You'd, you'd hope so. Yes. The boys so. get the 300 gamers in the AFL, get gold cards. Do they? And what does that allow? I think it's, uh, I think, I'm just going to guess, uh. it's four tickets to every game of football for the rest of your life. Oh, my God. Uh, and, in grand finals? And, and in grand finals, two tickets. And you get to go up behind the glass at a beautiful lunch every day, every grand final, and sit there and just enjoy. And excuse it. me, how many games did you play? I missed two fifty six. Oh, brownie! Oh, get back oh, out no, there! Couldn't Sean. you have limped through another fifty like you did the last fifty or so? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good point. Call up West, call up West Coast. Pike, yeah, I know, mate. Come back there. Yeah. Me and Pikey had this discussion because we both missed out. Like Pikey got a bit closer than I did. Uh, we pulled up short. So now the difference, Swanee, between grand final day for us is we sit out near Bay Thirteen. With all the lunatics, especially your supporters, Swanee, with no teeth. Go Tigers. Uh, with one, on, on your own, that have played an extra limp through an extra 15 games, you'd be up behind the glass oh. drinking Carlton Draft out of pot glasses. Oh, John. Oh. With, with your friend. John, John. Re- anyway. regrets you have a few. But that is a goal. They, the boys get goal, goal cards. cards for his, his life turned out so shit, didn't I it? Yeah. I mean, it's about time you got a, it's about time he got a win. God. We need we need to bring it down to 250. 250 yeah, games? Yeah, let's make the campaign. <laughs> or like you said, ring Adam Simpson. He'd probably have me at the moment. I think yes. we can officially say, even though you are Uncle Dave, yeah. we haven't received a single call from someone with a gold class. So I, this is I, officially the most unrelatable topic we've ever talked about. I reckon gold cards are a hard one. I yeah. Well, yeah. they may say. not exist anymore. Mm. This guy, this copper is getting taken to court. Mm. For, and supposedly had a gold card. It must the fact that he's maybe endangering lives, that could supersede the gold card. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. No. Sure, I should have one of Keith's pies by now. <laughs> yeah, sure. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Coming up later on, the lovely and amazing Miff Warhurst. And uh, we're going to be talking footy because last night was pretty wild, but in the meantime. Okay. Dino's. Pitch. Ow! Dino's. Pitch. Oh, yeah. What? Dino's Pitch. Chuck me in a ditch. It's mine. Dino's Pitch. He's no bitch. I'm no bitch. Or maybe I am. Maybe Who knows? you are. We're about to find out. It's Dino's Pitch where we hand the show over to our favourite person in the entire universe, yeah. Dino. Oscars, not Oscars, even better than the Oscars. The Logies, uh, Sunday night. Better, Sunday night. Better than the Oscars. Better than the Oscars. Everyone says that. We're all going. The whole damn team's going. Good. While Jonathan and I will be playing golf on the Sunday, Swan and Pang will be getting ready for TV's Night of Nights. We will. Better option. I don't want to do a spoiler alert. Are you going to go through the list of names that are coming on our special Logie show on Monday? No, you can. Callum Scott, Joel Creasy, Ooh. Lee Sales, the great Lee Sales, Tony Martin, Tom Gleister. They're all going to be oh, there. Oh, B graders, I would have thought. Yeah. They're going to be Any A graders there? Any chance? Rolling up. Oh, Tom Gleeson. They're, well, they're all A graders. They're... They're, uh, They're rolling up to our hotel room. Here's my concern. 
Swan's doing a, an award with Carl Stefanovic. I am. I'm presenting. <laughs> <laughs> the overture starts. Carl and I. Yeah, yeah. Me, the... straight as a die. Him, three sheets to the wind. Yeah, yeah. He'll be up to some horse plays. Of course Hang he will. Say, wouldn't he? Well, of Swan, he will. Mike we can... flirt outrageously, Carl and I. Outrageously. It's the safest flirtation there is. They'll be flirting? Oh, that's the only language we know. Well, I was going to say, I'm worried about Carl's state on the night, and mm. you're going to have to be, you know, he might be a, what's the word I'm looking, a liability when right. you're out there. It's live telly. So what we're going to do now is practice and get you ready for any scenario. Okay. Oh, so right. well, here's the teleprompter. Jonathan, you're going to play an inebriated Carl oh. Stefano <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> okay. Fantastic. What casting, huh? I can easily get in character for this. Great. So the musical, the musical start, and then you two will just do the thing. You right. understand? I've got it. Good luck. I love this. And this is practice because on the night that mm. wild pistol could do anything. Exactly. Oh, Carlos, my second name, Christo. I'm pissed, ready. Pissed being the uh, operative word. Hello, I'm Chrissy Swan. And I'm shit faced. <laughs> <laughs> so excited to see you all dressed up. My boobs are tingling. And my brain is tingling because I had my first Long Island iced tea today when the Maggie's menu was still on breakfast. Oh, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> You cad, listen up, you bloated sons of bitches. We're presenting the best lifestyle program. This evening, my lifestyle includes some tequila so flash I can't pronounce the <laughs> name, a mechanical bull and some monkey pox. Yes. Carl. Oh. Lucky you, oh. the nominees are the living room. Average. Better homes and gardens. My home is better than Koshy's. No <laughs> doubt, Carlos. Gardening Australia. <laughs> That's the one hosted by a magic name, isn't it? Spot on. <laughs> Love it or list it, Australia. Very boring and average. Oh, I disagree. Bondi Rescue. Those lifeguards should carry can guns. Oh, Carl, you cad. And travel guides. Snore. And the winner is... I've broken the seal. I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bondi Rescue. <laughs> Oh, again. And look at that. I didn't miss a beat. Funny. Very good. If you Carlos. can handle drunk Carlos. Listen, Carlos, I'm coming for you. See you Sunday, baby. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Nick Warhurst, a radio legend, a Eurovision host and Bang Fan podcast host slash cult co-leader. She's digging into her DNA in the next series of Who Do You Think You Are? Which returns Tuesday on SBS. Here's Miff. Hi, Miffy. Hello, Chrissy. As always, a joy to see you. One of, the, like, Australia's most beloved personalities. Most loved. Exactly. Absolutely. I'm coming in for the love. That's lovely. I live on my own. I don't get this when I wake yeah, I up in the morning. So, it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, this is nice. This uh, is really nice. You get no hate walking down the street, no. surely. No, I don't. And I've got to say, because most of the stuff that I do is on ABC or SBS, and, mm. and I get uh, they're very respectful, ABC mm. viewers. Yes. And the other people that sort of know me from something usually say, oh, did, did we go to school together? <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. familiar. Yeah. Or uh, uh, because of Spicks and Specs, I get, oh, my mum loves you. Yeah. 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 So they're an older already. Yeah, yes. go a little bit older. Right? Yeah. Oh, when you see grey hairs come towards you, yeah, you know, yeah, you, know. you know. And I yeah, always I get from young kids, and it's really nice that the young kids still know me. Mm. But they always say, "Yeah, my my dad loves you, <laughs> <laughs> and my mum loves I've you." And I'm few, like, "Oh, thanks." But oh, I've had a few. My nana loves you now. Whoa. Whoa. Wow! Whoa. Wow! Yeah. Time to book a room at Canterbury Muse. <laughs> um, now, Miff, I love Faversham House. Thank you very much. Where my mother is, Faversham House. Lady Faversham House, Miff. Um, I love Who Do You Think You Are. So do I. Um, you, it is returning on Tuesday. Your episode isn't until the end of June. I know you can't give away too much, mm. but did you learn things about your family tree that you that you didn't know? Well, absolutely. And it was one of the most... Uh, look, it was one of the greatest honours I've had making mm. telly doing this show. I absolutely loved it. I was in the middle of lockdown in Melbourne here, mm. and um, I think I was pretty raw at that point. It was right towards the end, mm. and I got to travel in country Victoria, which is really nice. That that Fantastic. felt like being overseas at the time. Back to Mildura. Yeah. You're from Mildura. Back to Mildura. No, we didn't end up going oh. back to Mildura, but did a lot of Bendigo, did a lot of the gold fields and Swan Hill. So it was it was all very glamorous. We had to keep in our Melbourne bubble. We weren't allowed to go out or anything like. Mm. That so because TV is an essential service, but I think I was really raw and I learnt a lot about my my dad's mum was adopted and it was considered a handshake adoption in oh, those days, is that? which is like they hand over the child with a handshake. Wow! Really? Parent it and and we have never known any of the history of uh, his great his grandmother, my great grandmother, and I learnt 
everything. Wow. And it was... Uh, it was traumatic, of mm, course. It mm. was really full on. Mm. I, was, I think there's a lot of tears. I haven't seen the episode yet, but I just, I, like I said, it was a real honour to be able to find out her story and then to tell it because I think what she experienced was horrific. And the resilience she, of women back in those then days was, um, and men, yeah. unbelievable. Mm. Was she young? She was she was very young, yes. and she lived to a ripe old age of ninety. And I think her life Gee. became became. A, a, an easier thing, but learning about her story, it just, it was really, it was it was a really <sighs> beautiful experience. But yeah, if you see the show, you'll see me just Such crying a, great a lot. Show. When, when you say it was traumatic um, when it happened, now are you happy that you did it? I'm so happy I did it. Right. Uh, it was, I mean, it wasn't traumatic so so much as, as I'm scarred by it, but it, I think learning her story has given me a bit of impetus to go and do what I need to do in this life because yeah. without her I wouldn't I wouldn't be here and she wow. she had a lot of stuff what a, great a lot lesson. of obstacles to climb and I met some relatives too I can probably tell you this part what? this is hilarious um through her other brother who was also given out as a handshake adoption mm-hmm. um I met my I guess you'd call them second cousins they're in America and their names are Cinderella and Candy yes! I know Hi, nice strippers. <laughs> Cinderella and Candy. In, yes. in the south, where are they? Uh, well, I, I'm not going to tell oh, you. Right. But, um, it was. <laughs> wow. it, I was like, I, my brain was rushing, going, "Who are these women? Um, what am I going to oh, meet? Wow. What are they? What do they do? Yes, brownie. Yes. Like, what's going on? But um, <laughs> it, I've now met relatives online, obviously, because yeah. everything was locked mm. down. I met relatives from America who, and it was bizarre looking at them. It was like, yes. oh, here's some women that look. They were my age. They look like. Like really? Me. really? They, wow. And they were fabulous. Like, I mean, with names like that, you couldn't oh, get there, could you? Really? Really? What way you life I'd argue with those names? Wonderful. <laughs> uh, exactly. watch, you got to watch this. Uh, Who Do You Think You Are returns Tuesday, 7.30 on Jesus. SBS. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Over 100. Dave O'Neill's in Pangy's chair. And uh, warm those pipes up, Swan. Attack and food! She's, she's oh. got some energy. Well, he's up and about for the Logies this Sunday. Oh. Christine Swan, uh, hopefully you don't need tickets, digital tickets to get into the Logies. No. It's been a real problem for the AFL, and that's what uh, the AFL is blaming for the low attendances this year. Really? Oh, it, even, in what way? Well, it, it all it has all gone digital. So, you know, the tickets are on your phone. I yeah. think club members have to get the tickets issued for each game on their phone. The oldies, the oldies struggle with it. And I, but absolutely. even not, I mean, I wouldn't consider that I'm old, but I like a paper ticket. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I know that I've absolutely. got them on the phone and I get by, but just in my own mind, I like to print it out. I think so, especially if you're a club member. You, you, also, you get your card too, remember, so yes. You just leave it in your wallet, yeah. like there with your licence, and Agreed. you turn up to each home game with 100%. yours, and bang, there it is. Well, yeah. the AFL's recognised this, Swanee, and they're going back to paper tickets as well. Good. So you can get the paper ticket option to come along and try and boost crowds. Even last night... You know, it was a little bit uh, wet. I thought last night the crowd was a little bit disappointing. Carl Carlton Richmond in a big game. It wasn't freezing. as cold as last Friday, though. I know, but it's just so cold in the Freezing. The so there you freezing go. Uh, paper mm. tickets return, so hopefully get the crowds back up and pumping. Come on. Before, because uh, it's going to be a pump great it, fight. Pump it, nice and hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> pump, pump, exactly. pump up the gym. In many yeah. ways. Saying, that's right. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Uh, uh, Bailey Smith's been spending for two weeks. He was pumping it up. He was pumping it up. <laughs> on top of the other two weeks? Uh, so yes, he's, he's on not, top he, of. He's not available to round 18. You can't run it concurrently. You know when you hear that, when yeah. someone gets concurrently. sentenced or concurrently? No, I think it'll have to be one after the other because he's, he's spending two weeks on the sidelines. Oh, for head butt, and then he'll have to start another two weeks for his little uh, indiscretion, Swanee. He was carrying someone's bag. Yeah, yeah, but that that Just happened. Someone's purse. Yeah. That, that uh, happened last off season. Uh, that happened off season. I that was a while ago. Well, it, you know? yeah, it is six months ago. Apparently. It is controversial, you could argue. However, they've got press in this area because Shane Mumford, of course, was suspended. Sausage. Remember that the video? Sausage. Sausage. Oh, yeah. Sausage. Sausage. Yeah. The AFL spent him for two games for but, essentially bringing the game into disrepute. But then he fought Mumford and Sons and <laughs> kicked goals. He did really well. <laughs> But you know, but you know, Jeff Kennett was suggesting, which is ridiculous, that he gets two years, Bailey Smith. Yeah, I know. That's it's, as someone said for someone who set up Beyond Blue. Yeah. That's a, that's the worst thing you can do I to a young agree. man like.
like that. Well, young I love, people I love make him, mistakes. That's silly. Of course. Young people yeah. make mistakes. No. Yeah. Oh, Kenneth, Jeff, Kenneth, what are you doing? Kenneth lost his mind with that. Oh, Jeff. I agree. That was silly. Jeff. <laughs> Is that Bailey Kermit? Bailey Smith. Bailey Smith. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Oh, Jeffrey Kenneth. I love Should it. Should play for the Hawks. It's absolutely, <laughs> anyway. mate. Well, you could argue, Swanee. He was in the off season last year. Yeah. Um, you know, should he should he be getting suspended when someone who gets a strike against their name uh, gets an anonymous warning that's true. and a five thousand dollar fine? I don't so, reckon he should. Anyway. I, don't, I reckon that's it's too harsh. They would have agreed to that behind the scenes. They would have said to Bailey, "You are a uh, you are now probably our most popular figure in the game, especially in the younger generation. Exactly. This is not a good look for our game." Just go into a bit of PR control, Christine Swan. So Correct. two weeks for you. Remember that Thursday night as, as Kid Leroy cancelled and Bailey Smith got done for the headbutt? It was a terrible night for teenage girls. Mate, it was <laughs> trauma. Absolutely. A lot of trauma. Uh, last time we went to the footy, it was an absolute put beauty. Out, put, out your, uh, put out your tech fleece. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, it was Awful. a beauty in the end. What about, what about Brody this morning, Christine Swan, mm. was saying, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do when it started raining sideways? <laughs> I thought he's a sweet kid. <laughs> Uh, all I did was just close the windows <laughs> on the box. The corporate box. <laughs> Come on, Brady. Did you do you it? You're Port Adelaide supporter. Did you do it or did you put your hand up and say, can somebody close these windows? So I got the Honestly. usher to do it. Yeah, Absolutely. Course, can you please you close theirs and get me another glass of red, please? Spare a thought uh, for Pangy. He hasn't been to a Carlton game since they got good. Mm. Went yes, last night. He and did. his heart would have gone through a lot. Well, it would have gone through a lot because uh, there was a bit happening. Uh, it got turned into a good game. It looked like the Tigers were home then. Harry, Harry Mackay lit him up, kicked three goals in four Incredible. minutes. Incredible. Just after Shy Bolton we ran into an open goal and showed the ball back to Sam Doherty. Mm. Very controversial. Can I just Dave? do a poll of what we all think of that? I thought I like it because he's a. It's a bit cheeky and it spices things up. What do you think? Yeah. I like it because it's a bit cheeky and it spices absolutely things a bit up. of smart assery. If I was playing against him, I wanted to punch him in the head, Swanee. Just like my daughter said, my daughter Olivia, <laughs> she's a very passionate blue supporter. Mm. And at halftime, a big brew, ha ha. Broke out right in front of us there, Swanee. I'd opened the windows by this stage because the road had cleared up. And like a big blur, an all in brawl between the Carlton and Richmond players. It was great. Right. Cripper was in there and they had to the field of Richmond boys attacked Cripper. So Liv leant out the window of the co- coach's box and said, Cripper, don't let him do that to you. Punch him in the face. <laughs> Hey, clearly you you can see where she gets it from. Her mother. (laughs) (laughs) Who I love. Who you love. (laughs) Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Friday. You made it ahead of a normal weekend, not a long weekend. But let's celebrate having Dave O'Neill behind the microphone. Great, man. If you want to come see me live, this Saturday night I'm on the Red Olive nightclub and Greek restaurant in Heidelberg. Yes, brother. Red Olive. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I've never heard of this thing. I've never heard of it either, but the guy said, oh, it's almost sold out of the Red Olive. Is it like uh, Bojangles from Chopper? Yeah, well, maybe. I used to go and see bands there. Yeah, me too. A long time ago. Yeah, Yeah. Bojangles, yeah. Who knew there was a nightclub in Heidelberg? No. Who knew? No. The Red Olive. The Red Olive. How do you get tickets, Dave? I oh, just Google it. Just, just turn up and say, <laughs> just oh, Dave said he put my name on the door. Okay, great. Dave great, said great. he put my name on one the door. The, one of the great businessmen. <laughs> He's a real self-promoter. Yeah. Tidbits coming up. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Chrissy's Massive Tips. Life can be very Whoa. dull, am I right? It can be. Can Honey, be a bit of a drudge. Particularly for whoever does the cooking for, oh. the, for the family, and that's me. Over here, sister. Oh, God. <laughs> what about those days where you just go, if I have to make another chicken tortilla and guacamole, I'm going to cut a bitch. But you've built this up for the kids, though. Like, they have got a high that, They do. That's a pretty decent, uh, yeah. complicated meal you're talking about. There, oh, that you? is the base level. That's base level What about bolognese? House. Yeah, that's... You do that? Yeah, but mine is, like, slow-cooked. with yeah. cuts. Anyway, so yesterday I was like, I am done with my general uh, roster... Mm. Of, of meals? Of meals. Mm. And mm-hmm. I thought, you know what I feel like? What? Breakfast for dinner. Oh, great idea. So my massive tip for you is mix it up. My kids were so excited... Mm. To have breakfast for dinner, and I did it properly. I got a beautiful loaf of sourdough. I got from the supermarket hash browns you can get from the deli for 50 cents. And they are the same hash browns that you get at restaurants. Couldn't be making making money on those, could they? 
50 brownie. Cents. 50 cents. They were amazing. So what I gave to them was sliced fresh tomato. Uh, av- uh, ha- I just cut avocados in half and put them on a big plate in the middle of the mm. table. Mm. Fair, full disclosure, I've got a lazy Susan. Congrats, mate. Thank you. Big, very big. Thank wow. you. And so I just put everything on there. I toasted the, the bread and then put it on a tray in the oven while I got it all ready. Oh, beautiful. Right? So it was mm. always hot. Thing of butter, thing of Meredith's dairy, goats, cheese, Oof. bacon in the air fryer, all going at once. It, I was like the Swedish chef from the Muppet Show. Then I put it all on the Lazy Susan yes. with a plate in front of them. Uh, no, Yes, and I said, get a piece of toast and butter it and then queue up assembly line style. Mm. And then I fried eggs and I put, when they were done, put one on the piece of toast, oh, you go to it. the table, sort out the rest fried of your meal. Fried eggs on top. Uh, fried eggs on top of the piece of toast. Yeah, Oh, that is beautiful. Fresh from the pan. There is nothing better than eggs in the evening. I agree. And they agreed. Honestly, it was, they were so happy and it felt a bit cheeky and naughty too because mm. it's breakfast and mm. dinner. You distracted them. Yes. Uh-huh. And so breakfast they all, at Tiffany's. Breakfast, uh, breakfast at Chrissy's. Well breakfast John. at Chrissy's. That's, good. That's, very That's good. it. And very I was good. wearing a Givenchy dress yes. uh, <laughs> as I was frying the eggs. But they all went back to the table with one piece of toast and a fresh yolky egg on it, fried, yeah. but not, you know, lovely and soft. And then they could build their own ideal breakfast. And they loved it, I'm sure. Breakfast yeah. for dinner is a winner. Smart Swan. They Thank never you. would have known that you actually did stuff all. I know. Yes. <laughs> this is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Chrissy Salmon Brownie on Nova 100. We're about to do tidbits. And look, I love you guys. I don't want to uh, check out yellow cards, but if your tidbits are rubbish, you you might be banned for seven days. All right. The John? Pressure. I'm ready. Yep. I know I was banned for seven days. Yeah, and you but, came back. But I fought back and I fought back hard. Mm. Hard work. Are you ready? Yep. May I offer you a tidbit? You may. And take it back to World War II. Yes. Mm. Polarising topic, I know. I understand. But uh, this is history. I'm not making this up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Kamikaze pilots are a big thing in the latter stages of World War II. Uh, kamikaze pilots would target the American destroyers mm. and uh, aircraft carriers. Uh, and obviously kamikaze pilots, they wouldn't come back most of the time. Uh, they were given warnings if they did return from a mission, of mm. course, Swanee. Kind of like you know, suicide, some, suicide yeah, bombers. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes yeah. like a, uh, they would fly it into the flight deck of the plane to, instead of bombs, it was more accurate, um, and sometimes they would return. However, there was one pilot, uh, nine times he returned. <laughs> And he's done, the, he's and done on, well. And on the ninth time, they said, no, come on, mate. Now you're taking the piss. <laughs> so was, they, he, was, so he a, was he a cat? Hey, oh, no, hey, oh. Well, just like a cat, on the ninth time, Swanee, uh, they executed him for cowardice. Okay. Oh, oh okay. no. What a terrible... Oh. No wars. So, well, may I offer you a tidbit? Yeah, man. World War One. The first shot in World War One. the first shot was shot off the coast of Portsea... By a because a German freighter tried to escape, and the uh, they shot a gun at him to give him a warning, and he turned back to port where they were arrested. Mm. Really? Yeah, first shot. It was a, what, what, just like a farmer standing on the beach. No, no, shot it was a, a prop, proper. Um, I thought it was Franz Ferdinand or something, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the assassination of Archduke yeah. Fr- uh, Franz Ferdinand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, apart from that I shot, they kicked it off. You know, the, un- the only shots these days shot in Portsea, you know, shooting the bogans are coming from Rye. No, the only shots that. <laughs> The only shots at the only shots at Portsea uh, caviar bumps. Uh, in the pub shots. Uh, may I offer no, no. you guys a tidbit? You may. You know how I worry about the population of the world, and I'm like, oh no, mm. you like Dick Smith? You like the young Dick Smith? Everything's like, so. running out. Mm. There's no more lettuce. Shit. Well, if you put it in this way, it might be more palatable for you. If everyone mm. stood shoulder to shoulder, everyone on this planet, 7.5 billion people, they could all fit in the city of Los Angeles. Mm. Whoa! Really? That's impressive. Yeah. And the population of the world could fit in the state of Texas. I apparently. like it. May I offer you a tidbit? Whoa! Uh, the other day I was having coffee with my friend and I didn't know how to use something and I said, oh, I'm a bit of a Luddite. Do we all know what Luddite yeah, means? Not good with technology. Not good with technology. And he said, may I offer you a tidbit? Mm-hmm. And I said, you may. And he said, Luddites are named after a man called Ned Ludd. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, who um, in the late 1700s is supposed to have broken two stocking frames in a fit of rage and uh, and 
he was a, a like a fabric machinist mm -hmm. and he's just like I, I'm going to do this by hand bang get rid of the machinery oh and uh, and then people that agreed with him joined a, 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 a movement, movement called the yeah. Luddites. Yeah, they used to smash stuff yeah. up. Yeah. Wow. Really? Ned like Ludd, L-U-D-D. My old man might be a Luddite after a golf game the other day. I think so. He couldn't get the ball out of the bunker. Mm. Julia, there's been a very high Absolutely. standard of tidbits this morning. Thank Please. you, Dino. Please we really tried. Yes. Julia. Hello, may I offer you a tidbit? You may. So, you know the classic hip hip hooray after happy birthday? Yes. yes. That is only an Australian thing. That's yeah. not done um, in like America. Is it so in America? If we go, if someone goes hip hip, they're just looking at you. Go what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. They won't. Yeah, they have no idea. I wonder if that's happened to anyone <laughs> where you've been overseas yeah. and just thrown thrown up a hip what, hip. What hip, about hip. the classic hooray for Dino? Hooray, yes. Elas, hooray for Dino. He's I'm a horse's ass. ass. What about why was <laughs> she born <laughs> so beautiful? I wonder if they all do that. That yeah. palaver. Julia. It's a good tidbit, Thank Julia. Thank you very much. Six bottles of Zonzo Estate wine, authentic Italian cuisine. Cuisine. It's in the heart of the Yarra Valley. They're amazing. You know, there are some people that have an absolute fear and hatred of people singing happy birthday to them. Really? Yes. Yeah, I can understand that. Yes, some people are just like, oh, God, this is the worst. Are they off, called... May I, may I you have, sorry. Yeah, yeah man. Dino. I was going to ask if they are called morons, those people. <laughs> <laughs> may I offer you a happy birthday tidbit? Yes, oh, you may. You, you don't often see happy birthday in movies because it's still in copyright, that mm. song. Someone owns that song. Yeah. Everyone knows that, Dave. No, I didn't know that, man. Oh, that's, there you go. You didn't that's know. why we can't sing happy birthday on air because that's you have to stupid. pay for it. I didn't know that's funny. I'm furious. Are you joking? I'm serious. Let's sing it now and just that's see what happens. We, that's why we have to play, like, you know, weird happy birthdays because yeah, there's a guy a, that owns happy birthdays. It's a bit like the uh, Australian flag. Mm. The government didn't own the Australian flag. No. They had to buy it back. Yeah, correct. Uh, ben and Doncaster, like what do you got, brother? Uh, a few tidbits. You may, Ben. Go on, you, Ben. Did you know that the Incredible Hulk was originally grey, but due to ink problems, they changed it to green? Wow. <laughs> that's a great one, Ben. Really? I didn't know that. Don't make me angry. Ben. Do you like the Hulk, Ben? You like the Hulk? Yes. He's cool. Yes. Wouldn't have been the same, the Incredible Hulk, if he was grey. He's just a little bit sick. What's wrong with, what's, what's yeah. wrong with the Hulk? Well, he's a comic character, which is black and white, so maybe gray was, he was grey. Mm, like, grey was easier. Mm. Yeah. Ben, do you ever get angry? Sometimes. Of course you do. What what <laughs> makes you yeah, angry, Ben? My sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on, brother. Younger sister or older sister, Ben? Older sister. Yeah. Oh, she picks on you, all right? Yeah. yeah. You're off to the Melbourne Zoo, the whole family. Thank you, Ben. Oh. But not your sister, though. Not your no, sister, no, ben. Ben. no. Janelle in Mill Zoo's Park. Fun. Good morning, Legends. Hi, Janelle. What you got? Ah, uh, so the beautiful uh, and amazing uh, Janelle, thing. Janelle. Oh, sorry. May I offer you a tidbit? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm so fun. excited. Uh, the amazing and beautiful Stevie Nick estimated that she spent about a million dollars on cocaine in the 70s. Mm. And she burnt a hole the size of a dime in her nose. Yeah. Ooh, really? Yeah. This is and she's right. actually carry it in a little Coke bottle around her neck as a necklace. What, the um, her nose <laughs> hole? Nose. I, I was uh, scrolling through Instagram yesterday and I saw a great headline. Uh, Christine McVie's just been interviewed. She's the other woman in, in Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. She wrote Songbird, um, sang Songbird. Yeah. Um, and she said that cocaine helped her and made her more creative. So jam it. There we go. Gunners, you look like you've got some supporting. Yeah, what's that necklace you got, Gunners? <laughs> What's it was a present. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm holding it for Ash Gardner. <laughs> friend. Janelle, you've got a $200 make-out meal voucher. These are restaurants like Entrecote, Mama Cita, Easy Peasy. Oh, uh, right. They get delivered to you by... Uh, who, who delivered? Stephen May from the Melbourne Football Club. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Janelle, before you go, can you give us a Stevie Nicks impersonation? Have you got one in you? Oh, um, just like the wide wing does. <laughs> Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Good morning, gang. It's Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Uncle Dave O'Neill's here and now. Stump Chrissy. This is where we, we have realised that Chrissy is a frequent when it comes to guessing songs, particularly from the 80s, 90s. 
and she's got a great competitor in Deb from Bandura. Deb from Bandura is the undisputed champ and so much better at me. This should be called Stump Deb. So much better at you. <laughs> so much better than me at this. Should be morning, this should guys. be called Stump Deb. Morning, Deb. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good. Good, good. good to hear from you. I haven't heard from you in ages. How's things, Deb? It's good. We're getting there, you know, doing our best. How's the husband? What's your husband's name? Brian? No. Bernie. 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 He is good. He's uh, working this weekend, unfortunately, but, you know, that's is, what happens with nurses. Where's he? Oh, he's a nurse. Yes. He's a nurse, yes. I, I met him. I thought he was a male stripper. I just got that vibe. <laughs> I think I vibe from Bernie. <laughs> he does have that energy, doesn't he, he does, does. Bernie? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Moonlight's is a nurse. <laughs> just, yeah, because Goldfinger's burnt down recently, so <laughs> he's got to go and get a real job. And what was the one on Sydney <laughs> Road? What was the, well, the male stripping joint on Sydney Road? There was one on oh, there. Crystal T. Oh, <laughs> Crystal T. Really, I didn't know that. that was... a, did you ever go there, Chrissy? Oh. I remember driving past. But... I didn't, but if it was still and... around today, to be crawling with monkeypox, oh, yeah. no oh. doubt. Oh yes, <laughs> it's bad. All right, this is how it works. We play the start of a song, and then Chrissy and Deb have to buzz in and tell us what that song is. Uh, have you ever come in for this, Deb, to be live in the studio for this? I haven't. Oh, you have to come in. Come in soon. next time. We're gonna yeah, do absolutely. Definitely. All right, round one. Here we go. Names as buzzers. Buzzer check, please, Swanee. Deb. Go. Yeah, nice. Here we go. Deb? Go, Deb. Um, I know uh, it, but I can't. One of my favourite bands. Yeah, Midnight Oil. Yes! Uh, when I think about That's it. That's it? I don't know the name. Think yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I need to put something put, down. Put something down, down, down that weapon. I will all be gone. I love what he goes, it has to be an, an emergency. emergency. Something. Something. Oh, she, so good live. Does Deb get a point there? She didn't say the title. Yeah, give her a point. Her a point. Sure, sure, sure. That's 87. <laughs> that only went to number 32, so it wasn't a huge... Oh. Really? Round great two. Song. Here we go. Yeah. Go, Deb. Uh, Angel? Yes. Um... Oh, God, can't think of the name. It's from the 70s. I thought it was from the oh, 80s. The Take no. a long line. Take a long line. Mason. This reminds me of getting bashed at the railway station. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet, the memories you gave me. Round three. Oh. I suck. You should know this one, Chrissy. This yeah, yeah, it's... Um, 80, 80. No, sorry. Buzz in. Oh, I love you, that You buzz. love this guy, the lead singer. It's not George Michael. Yeah, it's Wham. Yeah, it's Wham. Wham rap. No, 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 no. no. I'll just play the chorus for you. Come, 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 very, a very nah. um, underrated Wham track. Well, fourth yeah. single from that album. Mm. I'm giving it to her. 2-1. Yeah, two yeah. One. Deb's yeah. favour. No one's named a song yet, which I'm furious yeah, about. Crazy. Round. It's very difficult. Four. Chrissy, yes. oh, yes. send me an angel. <laughs> Number yeah, six in eighty three. Oh. We used to sing "Send me some hair gel." <laughs> send me some send me hair gel. gel. Ringwood oh. Way. Of course you did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even I knew that one. Uh, Good band. Uh, did you know that one? Yeah, I just. Yeah. Good on you. What are you big and born well, in the disco? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. Brownie, sc- score check, please, Jonathan. Uh, two all. Mm. Here we go. Chrissy, oh. don't leave me this way, Bronski oh. Beach. I think we're going to move continents now, Dana. We're going to move continents. I wonder if they'll be playing that on the D floor at the Channel 10 after party, which is the best. Oh, you'd have to. Get everyone up. Here we go. Chrissy, Chrissy. Yes. Hey, how you doing? Yes. Sorry, Sorry you can't, can't get through. Hey. Ring, ring. Yeah. Run me and see. Yes. Yes. She's warmed up beautifully oh here. Oh, hey, you are. You'll be dangerous on the D floor. Yeah, here, we right. here we go. You yeah. and uh, Chris Brown. Yes. I reckon this one's a hard and one. And Miguel. Oh, no, imagine Name Miguel. More the Raging Iconic Bull. Trio, yes. Put a saddle on him. Here we go. Chrissy! Oh, what? Uh, Sophie B. Hawkins, damn, I wish I was your lover. Oh, you're free. I wish I was your lover. I like you till the daylight comes. Make sure you are smiling right. anymore. Oh. Yes. So that I'll be your lover. Things to eat. 
Yelping. I always sing this when I drive past Dino's flat. Damn. <laughs> hey, this is like us in the 2003 grand final. Just <laughs> running away with it. Come not on, the Deb. only one. One more. Deb, come on, one more. This is this. For the record, Swanee wins, but let's just go one more. One more. Here we go. Chrissy. Oh, yes. It's Crowded House. No. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it sounded like. New school? No. no not new school. Let's keep going. Okay. That's not new school. Killing in the name of yes. yes. Rage Against the Machine. Yes. Oh. Great song. If you won't do it, tell me. Number seven that went to in 93 great in Australia. Song. Great song. One of the greats. I think hey. Pikey broke the squat record. Right. The <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Soon to prune cross. It's Deb. a good workout song, isn't yeah, it? It's that an awesome good. workout song. Deb, we know yeah. uh, you're alone uh, this weekend because your husband's at work, but you've got six bottles of Zonzo Estate to keep you warm, <laughs> my friend. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. You good? It's Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Over 100. It's been quite a, a raucous affair this morning. Dave O'Neill, as always, we love you. Danny McGinley, the great comic, texted in and said that Happy Birthday is out of copyright. It was out of copyright three years ago. Because <sighs> we were talking about that in tit... In, well, if you were tit... tit yeah. yes. So, so now we can sing it to anyone. Sing Happy Birthday to anyone. We That's can sing good. it. Well, if you call 13 24 10 it's your birthday, we'll sing Happy Birthday. Just see and we'll enjoy a free shot at it. It's um, Sunday. I'm looking forward to see you on the red carpet. Me and Dean, I'll be sitting in a uh, restaurant across the road. Yes. Just enjoying a couple. <laughs> Take your binoculars. And, uh, just watching. Just watching you closely. Thank you. As you're just sworn in. You won't be wearing Birkenstocks like you did a few years ago, yeah? I won't be. I have got a pair of flats that I'm carrying in my bag, though, for later. Yes. Will you have a few beers and try and crash the red carpet, Brad? I'd love to see that. Malcolm Kennard style a few years ago when he knocked someone out of the after party. No, I won't be doing that. Well, like Britney's you know, ex-husband, you know, come to the party. I know what you're about to say. No, I won't. Nobody knows. Who knows Malcolm I wasn't is. going to say that, but nobody <laughs> does know who Malcolm Kennard is. I don't know who Malcolm Kennard hey, is. He's the guy that played Ivan Milat. Oh yes, of course. He was great. <laughs> he was in that, great. In that yeah, he was series. because it's not a massive departure <laughs> from his. Um, you set? Are you set? Are you yeah, ready? I'm set, and I've also got my um, my red carpet gameplay sorted out. I had a little, just a moment to think about it because I can't stand the red carpet. Well, you know some of the standards. So I know go. guys that go, that go in the back way. You can just go in the back way. I know. I can't this year because I'm walking with the mask singer. I'm walking with Mel B. With oh, the you, goddamn spice. You'll be there oh, and wow. Husey. And Husey, yes, very exciting. And Abby Chatfield, of course. The four of us are walking in. But I'm... Uh, what Chrissy, I, don't block me. Don't block me. What I do is that... Because everyone will be like, Mel B, Mel B, Mel B. Suits me fine. Yeah, and then... She'll go over there and then I will go in the centre, far away from everybody Tripper. and just, you know, say hello to Sonia <laughs> Kruger and say... And then I'm just gen, gently meandering up yes. to the end and then you're in. Smart you're in. And yeah, then smart. you're in and you haven't had to talk shit to nobody. Well, do you have any... You maybe... Do you have anything up your sleeve, just like Moomba? You I've know, got remember, nothing. You know, all those times, you know, when you're getting asked the same questions all yeah. the time... No. And you just got to throw one out there. Just, Absolutely just not. Just mix it up a little bit. In fact, my exact quote to the publicist from 10 yesterday was yeah. I said, I've actually got nothing to say really? that I haven't already released in, a, in an official press release about Masked Singer. Oh, well, yeah, I've yeah. said I'm excited. Please refer to the press release. Now get me in there. It's going to be great. Uh, great. We, now, we said we're not going, JB, but then Pang's no. like, if we can get, if I get you into an after party, mm. you guys a chance. And look, a chance. <laughs> yeah. Will you come to the after party? I'll take a jacket. Great. Well, you're going You're right. going to come, but not only are you coming, we are doing a live Logie's after party show. It's going to be loose as hell. The great Callum Scott Scott is going to be there. Now, he sings one of our favourite songs of all time. Which one again? Oh, Dancing on My Own. Oh, the great Callum Scott. I know, Scott. the great Callum Dino Scott. Dino won't be dancing on his own at the after party. No, he will oh, not. No. Ding dong. Don't you <laughs> worry about it. Hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Song from home and yeah. away. Don't do her shoulder again, though, all right? <laughs> yeah, not, her, not her shoulder. Be careful. Joel Creasy's popping in. The great Lee Sales, Tom Gleisner, Tony Martin, and we do have some uh, surprise guests who haven't confirmed but are very close to confirming. Right. So w- next time we hear, well, next time you hear us, we will be live from the Gold Coast post Logies. Sam has already said he's going to be very, very tender. Love that. And I, of course, will just be sleepy. And I haven't, con- and me and Dina haven't confirmed which half party we'll be going for. We're going to start a bidding war <laughs> this <laughs> afternoon between Channel 7, nine. 9 and 10. Oh, come on. Who wants SBS. to SBS. ABC. They may come with a late run. <laughs>
Uh, one more Channel, time. Channel 31. To get tickets to Dave, Google Dave O'Neill, you yeah. said before. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, I do the Grandview Wednesday nights in Fairfield. This Wednesday, Lloyd Langford's on with Troy Kinney. Oh, That's fantastic. A great night what a great Fairfield. lineup. Maybe I, I'll cancel the Lobies. I almost yeah, forgot. Do you know uh, we went to, our, I don't know why we do it, but after Best on Ground on Saturday night, we go to Russell Robinson, the band, to ask Russell Robinson where he's playing at next. And he said, oh, I've, I've got a gender reveal in Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've never done one of those. <laughs> hey, everyone, I almost forgot I asked for someone uh, whose birthday it is to call mm. up because we can legally sing happy birthday. And the only way this isn't going to be sad is if we all really commit to yeah, it. You yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah, of course. Hey, Donna in Berwick, you turn how old today? 39. 39 oh. today, 39 today. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Sing what? Happy birthday to you. Copyright free. Happy birthday, dear Donna. Six bottles, right. six, six bottles. bottles of wine. We're good to go. We'll be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Oh, unless it's a weekend. Yeah, we 100.